What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. I have a link to my newsletter in the description below, as well as my Amazon page. I am a comic creator also, so I'd appreciate folk who check that out. If you enjoy the videos, enjoy my thoughts on comics, uh, you might just enjoy my writing. So uh, thank you very much for those who support the channel. You guys are the best. And uh, let's get into this uh, book by Steve Ditko called A Touch of Genius. Now, I got this from Amazon, and it's already got a ding at the top pretty bad, which kind of annoys me. Amazon shipping is freaking terrible. Uh, and this doesn't have anything to do with the book itself, but I do want to complain about Amazon. They don't put it in it like even a like rigid mailer or anything like that. It's just thrown into a package and shoved out there. Uh, they really don't treat their books right. Sucks that Amazon is like really the way to go to get things these days, especially things like this, which are uh, a little hard to find in stores. But it is what it is. A Touch of Genius is uh, Joe Gill stories, which are drawn by Steve Ditko. This is comprises all of Steve Ditko's work in 1971. And I was very excited about this because a lot of this work is not reprinted elsewhere. Uh, you can get a lot of his early work in Fancy Graphics Archives volumes and uh, things like that. There's some books from Guandana Land, which also feature a lot of that old work. But 71 is past that date where the copyright uh, of, of stories gets uh, a little more solidified. So we've not really had a chance to get a lot of this material from, I'd say, 68 uh, through even 85 of Steve Ditko's work for Charlton. Now, I guess all of the work he did in 1971 was for Charlton. So this comprises his entire output. It is um, 236 pages of comics. Uh, there, are, there are some spacer pages in between, so it probably ends up being about 226 overall. And uh, I love what they did here. So this uh, this comes out, this is a uh, production from Robin Snyder and uh, Rodney Schroeder, uh, who have made famous comics here. And this is, this is their book, which they put out uh, together here. They have a nice table of contents, which talks about every story uh, that's in here, basically. Well, not or every uh, series that's in here that, that Ditko is writing stories for. One called Ghost Manners, one called Ghost Manor Volume 3. I guess they renumbered things and restarted things. Ghostly Tales, uh, Haunted, I Love You, Just Married, and The Many Ghosts of Dr. Graves. Each one of these, when they get, they're, they're broken up by which... Uh, which series he was writing for and there's a nice list of uh what every issue that was ever published so you can kind of know what they were doing and then uh each story and what issue they were in so if it's got the forbidden crypt it was an issue number 16 that came out in january 71 and you can see that he did a cover uh and all the covers that he did for charlton whether it was related to one of his stories or not are in here pretty cool um so all of these Charlton horror stories are kind of similar. You've got a you've got a narrator character who kind of just stands around and watches uh, the scene as it as it kind of goes by. And uh, there's been I think two or three of these stories were reprinted in uh, the Yoey Books uh, Creativity of Ditko collections. Uh, but most of this stuff is completely unreprinted. So it's really nice to be able to get this. This, this is about a weird panther tribe. Uh, that's causing problems <laughs> for a uh, uh, African group here. Pretty fun. And uh, yeah, the narrator gives like a, a summary at the beginning and then kind of just stands and, and gets drawn into the middle of the stories as their pace. It's kind of a weird thing as it goes on, but it, it's kind of neat watching Ditko draw these different poses of these characters uh, that are kind of unrelated to the stories throughout all of these. And it's not just, like, every one of these has a different narrator. You've got, you've got kind of this old man, Adam's family looking narrator, uh, in the ghost manor here. I, I, I have no idea why they formatted things like that, but they did. Uh, a Touch of Genius, if it turns out A Touch of Genius, I, I didn't know this ahead of time, uh, is one of the stories uh, contained within here. It was not just named that. This one's about a piano that kind of corrupts people. <laughs> it's kind of neat. <laughs> uh, as you can see, Ditko's really at his finest uh, in, in terms of work right here. He's got very excellent, distinct style, cool lines all the way around. I gotta say, um, I, I wish, like they had the money to really like really restore these a lot of uh a lot of the marvel stuff these days really has been cleaned up the colors have been touched up um and, and so you can see that these have have very clean scans 
but they are scans and you've got the yellowing of the pages that they're scanned from instead of just like the white, which is what you would have seen back in the day. And uh, the stories are kind of uh, put into the book through there. Uh, but still, there's, there's no point in here where there's a bad scan or anything like that. All the scans are completely perfect from what I can tell. There's no, there's no lettering that's uh, hard to read or anything like that. So you have a pretty good... Uh, pretty good read of things. This was a story, story about a, a gypsy. <laughs> These sorts of things cannot be told in 2021. But it was pretty fun. Uh, this one was reprinted before. It's about a cat, and she becomes like this cat lady, and she and the guy thinks he's lost in time. Uh, this is one of... Steve Ditko really doesn't draw uh, beautiful women very often. And uh, he actually does uh, some drawings here, which, which are a little more, uh, you know, uh, curvaceous and uh, good looking, which which you don't see very often from him. So it just shows that he can draw how he likes to do things. He just likes to do his style, which is the mark of a good artist when you knowingly draw the way that you want to draw rather than just by accident. Good stuff. Um, and so this guy eventually realizes that, you know, all times kind of had their, have their struggles and uh, eventually comes back. And it turns out, even though he thought it was a dream, the cat lady's real. And uh, they go off into the sunset together. It's a hallmark of these stories, really. So this is this is very uh, very much a formula that Joe Gill was using over the course of these stories. Uh, you get this whole storyline that like goes about eight pages, and on the eighth page, there's a quick twist, and there's a wrap up in like the last three or four panels, perhaps. And it it turns the story on a dime that fast. Like you really are in one pace for the majority of the story, and then it it shifts pace really quick and wraps things up really quick. Uh, right here, whether whether it's a happy ending or not, um, it, it's jarring at first when you get into this. But as you start to get into it and, no, and notice how the pacing goes, you kind of get used to that pacing of storytelling. And as you can see, we've got another narrator who's just kind of hanging out and uh, smirking over the course of <laughs> these stories here. Very interesting stuff. This is one where they go into a, a party and, and into a crypt. Very... Uh, very old school uh, haunt of horror or uh, tales from the crypt. Look for this uh, this this bald decrepit guy right here. Steve Ditko really does horror very well, and uh, you know, even though he doesn't get talked about in that capacity a lot, most of his work through these eras were in that regard. Here's an interesting story about a ghost who sees this like woman who's like really torturing this dude, and uh, the ghost eventually kind of takes control of his body. Uh, because she loves him. Very, very interesting story here. You get a really a lot of cool, uh, crazy concepts. And I should talk about the covers, too. The covers are just out of this world. You see all the, the, the like, Jekyll and Hyde combinations here where things look very strange. You kind of see that impression of the ghost on top of things here. Uh, it, this, is, uh, this is wild and out there. Uh, Steve Ditko's covers are really different compared to anybody else's. You didn't really get this sort of psychedelic look from anybody else at the time. Neat stuff. And they're all, you know, mostly eight-page stories as you go through here with the narrators and uh, horror with a twist until you get to around page 200. There's a, he did a couple romance stories for Charlton. And, and most of these lines, DC Comics, Charlton, all these companies had romance comics uh, for girls for the most part. Uh, during this era, and they don't get reprinted very often whatsoever. Uh, it's pretty cool to see, and it's neat to see Steve Ditko really change up his mood, because you can tell the horror mood, just like the gruesomeness, the lines that he uses, the darkness that he uses here, versus the romance. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's very much a cleaner look, and it's very much a uh, look that doesn't feel as dark whatsoever. Pretty neat stuff. This one's a very bizarre story, <laughs> uh, romance-wise, where, like, this guy's kind of... She thinks it's his, her cousin, and uh, he's keeping all the other guys off of her. And towards the end of the summer, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm not your real cousin. I'm, like, your step-cousin or something like that, so we can actually get together. It's kind of bizarre. <laughs> um, and then this one from Just Married, and we get a, uh, another nice romance story from Mr. Ditko. And Joe Gill. Very cool stuff. 
I was very happy to read those uh, because it just a nice change of pace in the middle here. The Ghost of Dr. Graves is another one of those uh, horror stories where they've got a uh, narrator who kind of hangs out. Uh, there was actually a story I read, it wasn't in this volume, where Dr. Graves was actually a character uh, who, who did his own thing. He looks a lot like uh, like Dr. Strange. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta say, he's got that vibe to him as he narrates the stories uh, over the last couple of horror shorts here. This is one about a, uh, and it, it got the cover here. There's a dog, and the dog heralds that somebody's gonna die. And uh, they are trying to build a road through town, and this guy keeps, old man keeps flipping them out with the dog. Look at look at all the expressive Steve Ditko faces. He loves to draw these these faces that are just in these like horror poses, detached heads. He's kind of always done that sort of thing. Very cool creativity from Ditko. And it turns out the guy's been long dead, and it's just a ghost who's trying to protect his deal. They end up burying him and and his dog, and then he's happy. And here's one about a pharaoh uh, that. Uh, buried himself and wanted to come back in time and a jet taking off actually created so much sound that uh it stopped the mummy from taking over the world <laughs> cool concepts very cool look at look at this pretty pretty cover again one more one more very psychedelic cover this this kind of gives me a james vond vibe here who dares face the ghost of the wax museum and this is an interesting one where they set up, the police set up a wax figure, and you see Dr. Graves go narrate through the, the panels here, uh, of a crime. And uh, it turns out the guy was innocent, and his wax figure uh, takes down the real criminal towards this end of this, with the expressiveness. Ditko's expressiveness is second to none. You just see the fear in the faces uh, that is unparalleled. He just had this pained look to a lot of his characters. Cool stuff. Just the, something in the close-up of his of the eyes he did is unbelievable. And that's it. So this is a wonderful book. I highly recommend this uh, if you are a Ditko fan. If you just want to read some interesting short horror stories also, pretty good. Uh, the cost of this is... Is that written on here? I don't know what it is. But whatever. I was going to pay anything for this. <laughs> I would have liked a nice hardcover version uh, to match all my Fantagraphics archives. But... This is a great start. I hope they do many, many more of these, and I hope this video helps promote and get the awareness out there because I don't think a lot of people know this exists, and uh, people really should. Ditko should be celebrated, and all of his work should be read on the regular for people who love comics. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.